In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the idea of associative dimensioning in AutoCAD. Associative dimensioning just basically says that the dimensions are associated to the object, so if the object changes, the dimension will change as well. This is typically true, although I'm going to show you a couple of situations where sometimes we dimension things maybe not in the best way, and then the dimensions end up being non-associative. So first let me just start with an associative dimension. I'm going to create a dimension on the left side of this part here to see its height. As you can see, it's 3.5. I'm going to go back to model space where the drawing is of the part. And I'm going to stretch out using the stretch command. The bottom here will say 0.75. As I return to the tab, you can see that now that I've got a larger object, the dimension updated. So that is an example of good associative dimensioning. Going to undo a couple of times to get that back to where it was. Let me show you a couple of examples where associative dimensioning can go bad. So first of all, let's say I want to dimension the length from here to this edge over here. And what I really want to do is I want to click and snap on this edge. Although I see students occasionally track up and create a dimension that looks like this. So that's not appropriate dimensioning because I want that extension line to extend almost to the shape itself. But I'll show you if I were to leave it like that, you will see that if I were to stretch this shape out using my stretch command and return back to the tab, you can see that that dimension did not update. So it is a non-associative dimension because I did not snap to the actual object. You may try to fix that by clicking on a dimension and grabbing that extension origin and snapping to the point that you want. I'm going to switch back to the model space tab and stretch one more time. And When I return back you can see that even though I snapped to that point that I wanted it didn't update. So once it was non-associative it, it really didn't reassociate to the object. So the point there is if you make a bad dimension it might be best to go ahead and delete that dimension and re-dimension it rather than try to adjust it. I want to give you one more example as I undo a couple of times of another dimension that's commonly placed incorrectly that can affect you. I'm going to begin with the diameter dimension for this circular shape and in this particular dimension style when the dimension is created it also puts the little center point in there as well. So if I want to locate this hole it's very easy to snap to this center line instead of physically snapping to the center of the circle. And in many cases this will cause non-associative dimensions. So I'll go ahead and dimension the center of that circle. I'm going to come back here to model space and I'm just going to grab the center of that circle and move it a little bit. Let's return to the paper space tab and as you can see neither dimension updated. Occasionally one will update not the other. Um, it's kind of random but the point here is you really want to make sure that you snap to the center of the circle not to center lines. So if I dimension this one more time and this time I'm going to hold my mouse over the circle. I can see the center highlighting and I'll place my dimension. Now I'm actually associating this extension line to the center of the circle. So now if I were to grab this grip and move it again and return back, you can see the dimensions properly updated because they are associated to the object. So again, associative dimensioning is a great thing. Change your object and the dimensions update but you just have to kind of make sure that you're dimensioning in the proper manner for those to work all right.